can sit down now. Because, bro, Daniel, if I go by this, uh, by what you have provided me now, then uh, <laughs> we will just, we will just, uh, no, but Lord Jesus, we love you. Amen. You are so good to us. Marvelous God. What a privilege and honor to be called his own. And to be called into your presence as your own. As your own. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. So, the time we are blessed. So I realized that before David took on Goliath, there was something, there was a question he asked. Put first Samuel 17, 26. David asked them when he got there, he said, okay, uh, this guy that is, is behaving like this, threatening us, whoever can take him out, what will be given to him? What's the benefit? That's what the Bible says. It says and David spake to the man that stood by him, saying, what shall be done to the man that killeth this Philistine and taketh away the reproach from Israel. Is there any benefit for the, the person that can take him out? Before he got into action. Let's also look at Judges 14, 12. And you will see when, when Samson was giving the redo to the, uh, to the people there, he also asked them, he said, look, this thing I'm going to ask you, if you are able to work it out, this is what you, you will get. There's a benefit <laughs> for you, right? That is in Judges 14, 12. And Samson said unto them, I will now put forth a riddle unto you. If you can certainly declare it with me within the seven days of the feast and find it out, then I will give you 30 sheets and 30 change of garments. He said, if you are able to declare it within the seven days of the feast, uh, there is benefit for you too. Now let's look at Genesis 29.20. Good. There's a spiritual lady there. A man full, a woman full of the Holy Ghost. <laughs> 29.20. Uh, and Jacob served seven years for Rachel. He was serving because what? There was a benefit. So we're going to look at some of the benefits that can come out of living a life of a referential fear of God. Is it worth it? Why do, we, why do I need to fear him? We just saw, you know, oh, my goodness. Where is Brother Francis and Sister Sandra that were leading prayer? Or oh, you are upstairs. When I came in and I saw, you know, normally when I come here, I will be, uh, God, God just, you know, the Bible talks about Jesus, how he was moved by compassion. Uh, he was, he just had compassion on me. He said, son, it's not every day that I will allow you to just be trembling and shaking. And wondering. He said, I'm going to give you confirmation of the message I have given to you today early enough. To, was, did you guys see me sitting down during the worship? Did you, have you ever seen me sitting down before in worship? I was just looking at the Bible, looking. Never. Because when I came in, for some reason we couldn't connect to the service on our way coming. So it was just as I got in here. And the first scripture that was on the board was, is it Isaiah 11 verse 3? And you use the NKJV, Right? Isaiah 11, 3. If I, when I saw it, I said, God, you're so good. 
Oh God, you are so good. Put it there. Oh God. Isaiah 11 verse 3. NKJV. That was what I saw him. They were praying from there. You are so good. You are so good to us. He said, and shall make... The no, 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 no. The NKJV. Yes, this was what I saw. His delight is in the fear of the Lord. I had to... I dropped my Bible there and my coat first. Then I looked at the thing again. I said, huh? I said, uh, Father, thank you. Because we are going to talk about the benefits, the reasons why we should fear God. What is in, what is in it for us? Why do we have to? And there is nothing wrong with knowing the benefits of something. Before engaging in the thing. Like we saw, Samson had to even had to tell, ask, tell the people what benefits they were going to get if they were able to tell him the riddle. Rachel, uh, 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 Jacob was ready to serve seven years because of the benefit, the reward of that beautiful lady, Rachel. Right? And we also saw that in um, David asking. Is there anybody that is able to take this guy out? What will be given to him? Hallelujah. Amen. So once I saw this scripture, hey, I just, I was so, I was, I was just enjoying God. Because that's what we're going to talk about tonight. It's about fear. The reverential fear of God. What is it? What is this fear? Didn't the Bible say we should not fear anything? In fact, some people, some theologians, or some educated, enlightened, some scholars have done a study in the Bible and they said there are 360, is it 60, 366 times that they said fear not. That is one for every day. So is the Bible contradicting itself? If it's saying, in fact, it even says in 2 Timothy somewhere, that God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of love, of power, and of a sound mind. So, why is this uh, Laura's husband telling us to fear? Is he trying to confuse people? Which Bible did he read that he said we should fear God? The Bible says fear is not from God. Yes, there is a kind of fear. A certain kind of fear that you should have. If you don't have that fear, you should be afraid. <laughs> You should be afraid. So let's look at, we're going to look at a lot of scriptures tonight. And by the way, Emmanuel? No idea? Okay. Some people understand the code, you know. If you know, you know. If you know what I know, you will relax. You remember that? I'm good. So let's go to Second Chronicles 16.9. So many scriptures we will try as much as possible tonight. Because there is a message that God is preparing, been working on me, just giving me something that we're going to look at probably from next week. He said, for the eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole earth to show himself strong on behalf of those whose heart is loyal to him. No, no, you, after this one, just go back to our normal King James uh, after this one, right? For the eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole earth to show himself strong on behalf of those whose heart is loyal to him. Hallelujah. We'll stop there. He said, God is scanning, he's looking, he's searching for those whose hearts are loyal. Who are faithful in their hearts, who are perfect in their hearts. He said, when he finds such a man, when he finds such a man, he will show himself strong in the life of that man. He will display his almightiness in the life of that man. He will make sure that glory is brought to his name through that man. The one with a loyal heart, with a faithful heart, with a perfect heart, 
He said he's looking. That means they are not common. You don't search for things that are common that you can find anywhere. Things that are in common place, you don't look for them. So that is why he's, he's searching. To and fro throughout the earth. Everywhere. He's looking. Is there anyone there? Is there anyone in Hackney area? Is there anyone in South East London? Is there anyone in the East? Is there anyone in Bermondsey? Is there anyone in Camberwell? Is there anyone? He said his eyes, they are they, they run to and fro throughout the whole earth. May he, may we be found by him. By, the, by his grace and by the help of his spirit in the name of Jesus. Now let's look at Genesis chapter 17 verse 1. We see two men. You know in Genesis chapter 17 verse 1. You know God had, gave, God had um, given a promise to Abraham. Told him that look this is what I'm going to do. Um, from verse 15, you see where God is telling him, look, fear not, Abraham, I'm your shield, I'm your exceeding great reward. From chapter, that is chapter 15, rather. In chapter 16, you see where he's uh, saying, uh, Abraham's wife, Sarah, did not have children, and all of all these things, and he decided to go in spite of all that God had told him. He still went ahead to, he listened to his wife and he did whatever he did with Hagar and Ishmael came out of it. When he now got to verse 17, by this time he was 99 years old and God came to him and said, look, Abraham, Abraham, we are going to, we are going to, everything that has happened, well, uh, let's, uh, Let's, in a way, this is me paraphrasing. Let's forget it. We are starting again. From this time, your work with me is going to be perfect. Because I am going to be monitoring everything you are going to be doing from now. Any mistake again, you are done for. Your work from now on is not like the time that I made covenant, that I gave you a promise and I told you what you shouldn't do. I, I gave you a promise of what was going to happen. You decided to go and make it happen by your own flesh, by the energy of your of, of flesh, by your own strength. You think it was by that, but from now, you are going to walk before me and you are going to be perfect. Is it possible to achieve this? God is not going to tell you to be perfect. If it is not possible, if it wasn't possible, he wouldn't ask you. And we have seen the case of a man that the Bible, that God himself said was a perfect man. He was judged by his friends. Some called him evil. Some said it was his mistakes, the sin he has committed, the evil he has done, that has kept him where he is, that has made him like this. God said, don't worry about what they are. That is how some of us should live too. Not the judgment of people about us. What is God saying about us? Let's go to Job chapter 1. And we'll read from verse 1. And you will see the story of the man Job. How even his friends, even his close friends said, uh, it is what you have done. But look at Verse 1 of, from verse 1, chapter 1. There was a man in the land of Oz whose name was Job, and that man was perfect and upright, and one that feared God and eschewed evil. That means he hated evil. To the extent that by the time you get to verse 3 of chapter 2, God is now making a boast of him. I told you the prayer that uh, I know. Well, hello, little sister. Because my sister is watching, is connected from Nigeria. She is, is connected. I, I'm, I'm sure of one that is connected. So I'm, I'm greetings. Eh? But maybe before she was born, when we were growing up, I told you guys before, there was a prayer my mom, my mother used to pray. We say, God, 
Anytime anybody was sick or anything was going on, he said, do not let the things that befell Job to befall me because I don't have the faith of Job. She used to pray that prayer. But sometimes I'm tempted to say, ah, God, can you please boast about me to Satan like that, the way you did about Job? That a man walked with God to the extent, in such a perfect way, he, he avoided evil. He, he stayed away from anything that was evil to the extent. His, the life he lived was recognized in heaven that God started making a boast about him. What is asking Abraham to do? Someone has done it, achieved it. And those are the kind of people that the eyes of God are running to and fro in search for. So that he can show himself strong. So that he can make a statement. Hallelujah. So that was the case of, of, of Job, let us go to Exodus 20 and we will read 2 and 3. I am the Lord thy God which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image or any likeness. So you see God giving them command here. But let's go to Genesis 31 and 42 and you will see something that will amaze you. In Genesis 31 verse 42, a man feared God to the extent that they started referring to him. Let's read it. Except the God of my father, the God of Abraham, all right? And the fear of Isaac. The person is still talking about God. But when he was referring to Isaac, he referred to God as the fear of Isaac. You remember that God is telling them here that do not have other gods before me. He said, I am the one that brought you out of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Don't have any other gods before me. Fear me. Respect me. Honor me. Reverence me. Be perfect. They call this guy, they call God rather, referring to this guy Isaac as the fear of Isaac. Instead of saying the God of Isaac. And I heard a man of God say, what you fear is your God. And this person said, if it is, if it is the government you are afraid of, the government is your God. If it is sickness you are afraid of, sickness is your God. Anything you fear, that is your God. And it's scriptural. Because that is what the Bible says there. And the fear of Isaac. You can remove the word fear from there and it will be and the God of Isaac. But he called him there the fear of Isaac. He said, and the fear of Isaac had been with me. Surely thou hast sent me away now empty. You know who was talking here? Who? Jacob is the one talking here. Talking about his father, his grandfather and his father. So he called him the God of Abraham and the fear of Isaac. That we as a, as a family, as a ministry, as a network, as RCN London, that we will live in that reverential fear of God to the extent that they will say the fear of RCN London referring to God are you guys getting it? Yeah. Referring to God. 
Oh Gott. I wrote something here. I said, without the fear of God, you will lose that big time. Because of the benefits that accompany those who fear him. If you don't have that fear, and I said something earlier on, you should really be afraid. Put Proverbs chapter 9. Uh, no, um, Psalm 19 verse 9. And this is the time that we are going to start running. The reason we look at these scriptures, you know, so, uh, uh, have you listened to preachers that are very deep? I love them too. When you hear them, you say, wow. They use words like, the eschatological, they use words like prosukomai, they use words like, there, there, there was one that somebody said, there, there was a word that somebody used when we were talking the other day. He said, eh, this, this bolobulate, what is the word? Discombobulate. I said, can, you, can we just speak? <laughs> Discombobulated. I said, what is that? Can we just Have you heard some men of God, a man is talking and he's talking about the, I don't want to quote something that somebody used one time. You're like, ooh. In this, in this community, we have seen that a lot of people have been lobotomized. So because of that, we are going to de-lobotomize people with a process called lobotomy and say, my goodness, what is going on? <laughs> but do you know the word of God? You don't need to do all those deep ones. It's so, it, you know, Jesus kept it very simple, easy. He said, if somebody slap you once, he said, turn the other one. Is that deep? <laughs> is that deep? It's not deep. He said, if somebody collects your, is it your cloak? Or, he said, give him your coat too. He said, pray for the ones that hate you. The ones that, he said, love your enemy. Is that a deep, is that a deep? So, when I read the Bible, I don't find the deep things like that. I just find basic things. Say, forgive, forgive. Judge not so that you will not be judged. Forgive. They are so basic. I say, so where do they get these deep, deep ones from? So, I always, I say, wow, you guys are special. Maybe God will take us deep one day, but let's enjoy this one that we are now. This one, just fear God. Give him glory. <laughs> Is that deep? <laughs> so we'll look at some simple scriptures here. He said, the fear of the Lord is clean. It's not tormenting. It's not frustrating. It's not threatening. It doesn't enslave you. It's clean. Hallelujah. Say so the fear of the Lord is clean. Now let's go to 23 verse 17 of Proverbs. He said, let not thine heart envy sinners, but be thou in the fear of the Lord all the day long. You have to go because of your... Oh, we love you still. We will always love you. <laughs> he said, let I said, don't envy sinners. He said, there is nothing you should envy in sinners. It doesn't matter how they are living. Don't envy them. If or anything, uh, you should be concerned and be afraid for them. He said, don't envy them. He said, but just stay in the fear of the Lord every day. Every moment, every second, let your life, let the decisions, let everything, let the steps that you take, let the moves that you make, let everything that you do be guided by the fear of the Lord. Now, Isaiah 29, 13. 
this fear is not like I said, it's not the one of that you, you are. Okay, let's look at this one. He said, Wherefore the Lord said, For as much as these people draw near me with their mouth and with their lips do honor me, but have removed their heart far from me. And their fear towards me is taught by the precepts of men. So this fear is not the fear of men. So this fear is not uh, 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 religious fear. In fact, I heard somebody say, a man of God said, he was in a certain church. He said he used to think that if you cough in that church, it was a sin. Because of fear. So everybody was, everybody was, you know, sanctimonious, pious, sacramental. Those are the only deep ones I can speak. We stopped there. <laughs> Everyone was very serious, looking a certain way. Like we went somewhere. We went for a child's dedication one time. And one guy has been soaking himself in alcohol the whole night into the whole day. <laughs> Laura and I went. This friend of ours with his group of friends, they would drink, finish drinking with the empty bottle. Then they were singing some crazy song with the empty bottle. Big, 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 They were beating the drums, the bottles, empty bottles. Then we went to church. And they were going to take communion. <laughs> And these drunk men are so good. That when they went to take the communion, <laughs> oh. when they, when they were coming back, when, when I saw them, I tapped them. I said, "Look at the holy men. <laughs> they were so holy. They were just going. Then they put the thing in their mouth. Then they took this. Then they started coming. I said, "Is that the?" It's like the thing does it. If you open your mouth, it will just, just close the mouth. Very serious. <laughs> I said, with all the alcohol and all the everything you do, doing, since you have become a holy man. But the Bible says, Wherefore the Lord said, For as much as these people draw near me with their mouth and with their lips do honor me, but have removed their hearts far from them. What they are doing is just based, it's just by the fear of men. Let's just do this thing because that is how they do it. When you come to church, you carry yourself a certain way. You don't blink your eyes too much. After only once in two minutes, you just blink, <laughs> blink once and you stay. You look up and you do something. Even if you want to cough, you hold it. You can just do <coughs> <laughs> Have you seen those kind of religious? God said so that is not the kind of fear. Say their heart is far from me. Do you remember in Acts chapter 5? Is it Acts 5 19 or so where, where Apostle Paul and the other guy, Acts at 5 29, was asking the, uh, those guys that were coming against them? He said, No, no, you, you, uh, Peter and the uh, other disciples said, He said, we, 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 we ought to obey God rather than men. What we saw there in that Isaiah of those people whose hearts are far from God, whose lips, they just honor God with their lips. Talking about the precepts of men. Those are people that just fear men and not God. But they, they, they have the look. But their hearts have been removed far from God. The way this meeting is going, this message is going to be continued tomorrow because there are still so many scriptures to look at and uh, our time is... is uh, is, is, is running in a very high speed. Let's look at Proverbs 29, 25. So I'm trying to tell us the kind of fear that we are talking about is not this one where you just look, come out as a pious man, as a sanctimonious person, as a holy person, keeping a set of rules, walking a certain way because, or using some kind of language, you know the kind of Christianese, they call it. The, the other person, too, is a family person, is watching. And it doesn't matter what happens to anybody. They will say, It is well. I say, Stop using that phrase, that it is well phrase. Somebody has just passed away. If you don't have anything to say, keep quiet. Somebody has just lost 
a dear relative at a young age, you call the person and said, you hear it and you say, it is well. You are trying to claim that you are such a godly person that don't feel pain or what? What do you mean by that? Someone has lost their child. You are saying it is, what is well there? So, it, it, they call them Christianese. You know, people that want to appear godly. That is not what God is talking about. That is not what the fear is. It is not by the language. It is of the heart. There was a little boy. Uh, I'm not sure if it's a boy, a little girl that did something naughty and either the teacher or the parents wanted to punish. Let's say it was a young boy or a young girl of 10 years old, about that age. He asked this girl, you know the way they punish children in Africa? Go on your knees, hands up, close your eyes and open your mouth. So, so the girl did that. But she had boasted before that. It doesn't matter what I do. If no teacher, no teacher can ask me to do that, I'll do it. So the friends went to her later to say, but uh, you said you were not going to do that. That you were not going to receive any punishment. You were not going to obey any punishment that is given to you. But uh, we saw that you went on your knees with your hands up, with your mouth open and your eyes closed. And she said, yeah, I did that. He said, but in my heart I was standing. <laughs> I, I met the, he said, but in my heart, he said, I was standing. He said, I was, he said the teacher didn't see me. He said, in my heart, uh, I was standing. But you know, as we can laugh about these things, but that is how some of us live. So you come here, you are a clean guy. Oh, hello. Hi. Even the way you smile, you will make sure that you don't, the, you don't, you don't want to see that, ah, your mouth is, you are very, just go, hi. Yeah. Very respectful. Just appear a certain way. It's all, it's all fake. And God is saying, look, your heart is far away. You are only doing this thing from your lips. It's not coming from here. And what God is looking at is here. It was in the heart that he looked at. How can you call a man like David? A man after God's own heart. Somebody that committed adultery? You see? So we need to get to that place where we begin to pray the Lord. Holy Spirit. Because, oh, anyway, we are, we are going to continue this, uh, this uh, teaching. You know, I told you guys that in the month of October, I'm not going past the time. Good boy from now on. It started like two weeks now. I've been keeping to the time. So we only have two minutes now. So we'll finish. Next week we will continue because the, you will see how God gave a command. You know when God asks you to do something, he doesn't suggest it to you. He doesn't say, uh, daughter, uh, can you just please show love? He said, no, love. Love is a command. Oh, it's a commandment, rather. I can put it that way. Love your neighbors. He's not going to tell you that. Uh, can you really just try and make sure you... No. You talk that way. Fear not. Be still. And you will know that I am God. That's how he speaks. He said, Moses, go forward. That is how he speaks. Right? So we're going to see... How this fear is a command, then the benefits that accompany this reverential fear of God, we we'll look at that next week. Hallelujah. I will declare you are the only God, the only God. The only God. I will declare you are the only God. The only God I know. Amen. Father, we thank you for your word. We pray that we will be a people that will live by your word. As your spirit helps us. 
that our lives will bring you praise, will bring you glory. That we will be known just like Isaac as the remnant Christian network. London. Their fear, you will be known as the fear of RCN London. The fear of Henry. The fear of Laura. May we be found perfect. Help us, Holy Spirit of God. To be perfect in our hearts. To live just like Job. Thank you, Holy Spirit. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Hallelujah.